You kip if you want to, I'm not for kipping. <laughs> uh, right. Is UKIP a serious threat to British politics? Is it a growing force? I beg to differ. I don't think it is a growing force. I don't think it's anything particularly new. I just think it's the same old thing under a different name. And that same old thing would be prejudice against people, thinking that you've got all the answers when in fact you don't. UKIPers are absolutely thoroughly convinced they're right, even when the facts are against them. Only today, on the date of recording, which is May the 17th, 2013, Nigel Farage has been heckled quite badly, well, or quite well, depending on your point of view, and then he accuses anybody who shouts at him of being a fascist, which is a bit weird coming from him. Anybody who accuses anyone who disagrees with them of being an idiot tends to normally be an idiot. UKIP is just the a new evolution of an old problem that essentially is dated back in British politics. Well, there was first there was the British Union of Fascists in the 1930s, stirring up anger. Then in the 1960s, Enoch Powell. Then there's the National Front in the 70s and 80s, stirring up anger again. The BNP, very briefly, about three or four years ago, just to get people angry, because when people are angry, they're going to vote. That's what UKIP wants. They want to get people angry to vote for them. They like to point out in the recent council elections they got a quarter of the vote. Well, they didn't because there was a 33% turnout. Only a third of people bothered to vote and it was in the most conservative-leaning areas. They were The overwhelming majority of seats were held by the Conservatives, have been held by the Conservatives and probably will always be held by the Conservatives. So they're not really... A growing force, they're just a the parliamentary wing of the Daily Mail party. They're not really offering answers, they're just offering a way to vent people's anger, and that's not really a good force. Another thing UKIP likes to point out is that it's a new force in British politics, that it is a different from what uh, George Galloway called the uh, three cheeks of the same bum. Well, the other thing is that it, it's not, really. There's the Green Party, there's George Galloway and the Respect Party, if you think Galloway is... Well, I don't trust a man who has to dye his beard. I don't I don't trust them. There is the English Democrats. They're quite an unsavoury lot as well. But there are another party. You have to acknowledge that. There's the Monster Raving Looney Party, if you really want to go mad, quite literally. There is Plaid Cymru, Mibion Kerner in Cornwall, the Cornish Nationalists. There's in independent candidates. The, the amount of media attention they're getting is completely disproportional to the amount of support they have. They are being given loads of media attention, one way or another, for a relatively minor party. I mean, when the local elections are on, they got half, or if not three quarters, of the airtime, and they got one quarter of the vote. Whereas it wasn't, it was barely pointed out. The Green Party had some great successes as well. The Labour Party did pretty well, and the Liberal Democrats held on to most of their seats. And well, everybody did quite well in many respects. I'm a very optimistic person. It had them on the electoral calculus website. It's a very good website. You should look at that website. It's very interesting. Uh, electoral calculus. It had UKIP with, uh, I think it was above 10% of the vote in third place, and they still didn't get any seats at all. No seats at all. I'm quite disappointed in the fact the electoral system is that bad, because although I don't like UKIP, and it should be evident by now, they deserve to be in Parliament, I think, because it shows how ridiculous their ideas are. They've been, as if they've been invented by a politically incorrect taxi driver. <laughs>